Hello friends, this video on respiration in organisms part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now a few questions that might be bothering you. How does this exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place with atmosphere? So we are saying that oxygen has to get come inside your body, carbon dioxide has to come out of your body. So basically the exchange of these two gases is sounds quite complex. So how do we do that? So that is one question. How oxygen reaches different cells of the body? So even if we assume that okay somehow we may have some special part or some special organ of our body which will help us in taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. But how do we ensure that that oxygen which we have taken inside our body will get will be able to reach each and every part of our body because we are quite huge. We have I mean if you say uh, if you compare our head with our toe, they are quite far from each other. So how do we ensure that oxygen will be able to reach all parts of our body because it needs to reach all the cells. How carbon dioxide from different cells reach the right place to be expelled out? Now, you don't know what exactly, what is that special mechanism that we have in our body which helps us in gaseous exchange. So that is what we are going to focus more in this lesson that how do we uh, actually carry out this exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide with the atmosphere. So let us look at the basic thing that is what is respiration. So by now you have got a fair idea about what it is. So it is a life process, a process which is very important for an organism to live. In this process what happens is intake of oxygen because as I said oxygen is needed to oxidize the food and why do we need to oxidize the food to produce energy why do you need energy because energy helps you to do all kind of activities if you do not have energy you will not be able to perform any activity it is not only about performing activity even the processes which are taking place inside our body for example digestion reproduction excretion so the cells perform all these processes so cells also need energy to do all these things so not only energy which gets released during the oxidation of food but also carbon dioxide is one of the byproduct that is one of the products during oxidation of food. So this carbon dioxide also needs to be eliminated out of the body. So elimination of carbon dioxide basically respiration is a process which involves taking in oxygen giving out carbon dioxide oxidizing the food and releasing a lot of energy and that energy helps us to do a lot of activities in fact that is the energy which helps us to perform the vital processes required to live so that's how respiration is a critical process which is needed by an organism in order to survive so now let us look at the process of respiration. So we will look at respiration as a process. So in this process, if, if you just talk about the process, the main thing that happens is the oxidation of assimilated molecules releases their bond energy. Now as I said, during the process of digestion, the complex food is already broken down in the simplest form and then in that simplest form, it gets absorbed by various cells of the body. So now let us assume that the simplest form of uh, food is in the form of a simple carbohydrate which is glucose. So glucose is C6H12O6. So this is glucose which is the simplest form of carbohydrate. So this gets oxidized that is it reacts in presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water and a lot of energy. And this energy is what helps us to perform all the various activities and this ox carbon dioxide is released outside our body. So this is released out and this is taken in because this is needed. Now you might ask from where do the body get glucose? So glucose is actually obtained from the various food items which we eat. So these food items they are a rich source of carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, minerals, so some other other thing is present in these food items. Now sweet foods they are a rich source of glucose so they will directly give glucose to the body whereas some other foods they provide materials which are needed to create glucose. So that's how glucose is obtained from the food which we eat.
and how do we get oxygen that is the next question so that is what we will try to look at this lesson then how exactly do we get oxygen and provide it to the cells of our body to perform oxidation of food again carbon dioxide as i said it will be released out and this energy something interesting about this energy you know how do we store this energy now each and every cell of our body is undergoing oxidation of food so each of each cell is producing some energy so how do we store that energy so this energy is stored in the atp molecules so this is how atp molecule looks like atp is nothing but adenosine triphosphate you see there are three phosphate groups attached here that is why it is triphosphate and this is adenosine so adenosine triphosphate what is this this is like energy currency of the cell of each cell of our body now it might sound a little complex for you that what do you mean by energy currency let me give you a very common example let us suppose that you need to buy a, a chocolate okay so you tell your dad that okay dad i need chocolate now what your dad does he gives you say a 100 rupee note and he says that okay using this you can go and buy chocolate now when you go to the shopkeeper and give him that 100 rupee note will he give you a chocolate yes why because you have given him a currency so currency is basically uh, uh, something which acts as a base to define the quantity now let us say the chocolate the price of that chocolate which you want to buy is 50 rupees so he will take that 100 rupee note from you and return you 50 rupees right so basically when you have currency you can use that currency to buy different stuffs which you need similarly here also the energy which is produced as a result of this oxidation is stored in the form of atp molecules so these atp molecules are just like currency notes so for doing each and every work you just spend these notes so the more you work the more atp molecules get utilized so just an example let us suppose you have a total of 100 rupees okay so you go out to the market and you start buying a lot of things you first purchased a pen then you purchased a a, pay, a copy then you purchased some chocolates then you then you ate some uh, pastries and then you are left with 40 rupees now after that you again think of buying a pencil so now you are left with 30 rupees so what's happening the more you are spending the less amount of money is left with you because the more you spend it will the, the amount of money which you, you have will start reducing the same thing happens here so energy is stored in the form of atp molecules so more use the more energy you spend the less number of atp molecules will be left with you so the atp molecules are nothing but just like your currency notes so that is why they are called energy currency of the cell because the energy produced in a cell is stored in the form of ATP molecules which is adenosine triphosphate so I'll just write the name for you it is adenosine triphosphate and this is how the structure of ATP is so this is basically the real process of respiration thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.